When you think of racing games on the Famicom, what comes to mind? Rad Racer? Famicom Grand Prix? Family Circuit? Who needs those classics when you have Paris Dakar Rally Special? The developer didn't put their name on the title screen. Always a good sign. CBS Sony refers to the publisher, you see, not the developer. In 1977, Thierry Sabin, while in the middle of another separate rally, got lost in the Teneri Desert in Libya. Instead of dying of thirst, Sabin decided this incredible landscape would be perfect for a cross-continental race. According to the official Dakar Rally website, courtesy of his great conviction and that modicum of madness peculiar to all great ideas, the plan quickly became a reality. The first Paris Dakar Rally occurred in 1979, starting in Paris, France, and concluding in Dakar, Senegal. They've held one every year since. Well, not really. I mean, there's a rally every year, but they missed 2008 because of Al-Qaeda, and the competition hasn't involved Dakar since 2007. The 2021 rally, for example, is 100% inside Saudi Arabia. I'm sure there's no sports washing of a repressive misogynistic monarchy going on there. Anyway, in 1988, the event still bore the name Paris-Dakar Rally, and the CBS Sony group contracted ISCO to make this tie-in Famicom game. Here you input your name for maximum immersion. Can't wait for some white-knuckle high-speed action. Will this be as much of a disaster as the real-life 1988 rally? Uh, oh. What's this? I have to find my own car, co-driver, and sponsor? Well, the rally is open to amateurs. Only one of these buildings is marked, so you have to memorize which one is a bank, which one a car dealership, and so on. There are two banks, actually, but we don't even have a bank account. We seem to be a homeless person, best I can tell. Your biggest aid here are the good people of the car club. Basically, just talk to everyone about everything, and sooner or later, you'll clear stage one. I find a sponsor in the Open Link Company. At this point, I don't even have a car. You need a sponsor to buy one. Seems a bit backwards, but hey, I never signed up to the Dakar Rally. The contact at the company gives us a bank card, but that isn't enough. We need the pin. The guy who signed our contract tells us to find his manager, and when we step outside, there are suddenly three other people roaming the streets. You have to catch them and ask about money, hoping the one you're addressing is the manager. When you meet the manager, he tells you the pin, and you can withdraw your car money from the bank. So, without consulting his manager, some low-ranking person at the Link Company signs an expensive contract with a stranger based on a letter from the car club, then sends that stranger outside to ask people about the pin to a pre-existing bank account, then lets us take all the money we want from this bank account. Seems pretty suspicious. Shouldn't he just have given us a check? The roads can be lonely alone, so to find a partner, the car club has you complete a minigame. Depending on how well you do, they assign you a different partner. I got somebody named Mike. Alright, stage two. Now the racing begins. Or not? This isn't really a race. You need to reach the finish line, yeah, but second place, third place, that stuff is completely irrelevant. The main goal is survival. Fun fact about the Paris-Dakar Rally. The main challenge isn't driving faster than the other racers, but avoiding other cars smashing into you from behind. I swear some of these guys are trying to kill me Road Warrior style. You start each stage with three lives. The first two blows remove a life, only knocking the car over, but the third one destroys us in a fiery explosion. See? Wow, I look so sad. Seems I put the car back together, though. On the right are displayed our lives, and also the time and fuel remaining. If you reach the time limit, instant game over, same as a fiery explosion. For this reason, haste is encouraged, though putting pedal to the metal is a good way to die when bloodthirsty people start throwing millstones into the road. I never ran out of fuel, but I assume this would also cause a game over. 
This stage continues interminably. This is a theme. Every level feels like it'll never end. I don't mean they're boring, per se. Rather, they're just so long, especially when it's super easy to die and be sent straight back to the start. No checkpoints. Or rather, the checkpoints occur only after each stage. It's helpfully labeled. Between stages, I fasten a trampoline to the roof of the car, and Mike jumps down onto it to collect bonus fuel and time like in Nintendo's fire. This is standard for racers. The third stage is a maze game. We appear to be in an urban area where many spectators, no longer homicidal, still watch our struggles in expectant silence from behind the safety of brick walls. Other racers, if that's the term at this point, slowly drive around the one-lane roads. Hitting one causes you to lose a life. Occasionally a driver will blast from the bottom of the screen so fast that I no longer have any doubt they're trying to kill me. If they hit another driver instead, that car goes up in a fiery explosion. You're not surviving that. The Paris Dakar Rally has a high body count. Obviously, this is a sort of alternate history, or rather alternate present story. Sort of like Punishment Park. But the rules here are more like Death Race 2000 or maybe The Hunger Games, since this is public entertainment and I volunteered for it. You can drop what I guess is an oil slick. The other drivers turn around when they hit it. If two drivers consecutively hit the same oil slick, for some reason the black goo transforms into a fuel refill you can collect. Eventually, this too passes. In the fourth stage, we're really off track. Pun intended. This is a super basic side-scroller. Our car is mounted with a gun so we can shoot down the giant rats blocking our path. They don't attack, just sit there. There are also other greenish figures that climb onto the road, but I don't know what they're supposed to be. We still appear to be in an urban area though, judging from the buildings. A button shoots, B button does nothing. The gun only shoots forward though, so not much we can do about the giant crows who bombard us with eggs. Sometimes we come to a pit. When this happens, Mike leaps out of the car to do some platforming to hit a switch, bringing up a drawbridge, I guess. You have to play it to notice, but the character is both slippery and slow to build momentum. At least Mike can take multiple hits, or maybe infinite hits. With the ladders and rolling obstacles to jump over, this part reminds me of Donkey Kong. Ah, the road is collapsing, no! The only tricky part is timing the crossing of crumbling bridges. Often just blasting ahead at full speed, bullets blazing, allows you to dodge the tumbling logs and boulders but that strategy will get you egged on the bridges. The road never regenerates, so if you back off them, you're toast. While you can normally lose three lives before a game over, falling into a pit means an instant game over. The fifth stage begins the same as the fourth, more or less, but then we drive the car straight into the ocean. I would have thought we'd take a boat or something across the Mediterranean, but no, all the entrance cars must be equipped for underwater travel. This is a crude shoot 'em up level. With no power-ups, it's quite dull, but the way enemies sometimes materialize out of nowhere in the middle of the screen results in some unfair hits. This terrible level is what pushed Paris Dakar Rally Special from Goofy Racing Game into a hilarious romp. Paris Dakar Rally Special is basically frog fractions, but with an amphibious car instead of an amphibious amphibian. Screw the ocean, everything in it's going extinct anyway, so let's speed up the process. Besides, these are clearly mutant sea creatures. Prawns and octopuses and starfish and the rest of these punks don't grow to the size of a hatchback. The sixth stage returns to a top-down perspective and finally actually kind of resembles the Paris Dakar Rally. We're outside of Europe now. I'm surprised we didn't land in Algeria sooner than this. 
Africa should have been most of the game, since the African portion of the rally was way bigger than the European one. The enemies are still random wildlife, such as giant snakes, giant scorpions, giant boars, and giant camels. Giant gray centipedes, too. If you shoot them, they don't die. Instead, they change direction, potentially still hitting you. Every enemy moves in a specific pattern. For example, the scorpions always move diagonally in groups. You need to be most careful of the camels, since if you shoot them, they charge straight for the bottom of the screen. The moles don't attack, though hitting them will cause you to lose a life. Shoot the moles twice, and they transform into extra lives. I tried this on some other enemies, but no luck. Doubt this would work if you did it to real moles either, but I've not had the opportunity to man a gun on a car in a desert, so haven't been able to check. I've been assuming the animals we encounter are giant, but it might actually be that our car is tiny. Maybe Mike and I drank some Alice in Wonderland shrinking potion before beginning, and poured it into our engine, I guess. You can back up, though, to help drive around some obstacles. I crash into a lot of boulders. This is a fun level, except for one segment, maybe the worst part of the whole game. There's a lake that's too deep to drive through. Instead, you need to park on a narrow raft and drive sideways between it and other moving rafts before the last raft you're on crashes. You have one shot at each motion, and I encourage you to remember it's impossible to point your car sideways. To drive left or right, the car must already be moving forward or backward, which on these rafts surrounded by deep water is a dangerous proposition. Nothing quite like drowning. Remember, too, that driving into this lake, and no other lake you encounter, counts as driving into a bottomless pit, causing an instant game over. So you have to restart the stage to take another shot at the rafts. Criminal. The motorcyclists, however, still drew much admiration, thanks to their incredible courage. Sometimes, it would be hard pushed. In the next level, we graduate from wildlife to tanks, fighter jets, and helicopters trying to kill us. For the first and only time, the B button fires a second gun that blows up airborne enemies, but not ground-based ones. The A button still functions as usual, blowing up tanks. If this is what they put up with in 1988, I'm astonished that they cancelled the 2008 Dakar rally just because of a threat from Al-Qaeda. What could terrorists do that's worse than an entire military mobilizing against the racers? Anyway, we're definitely carrying out an act of war. We must take out at least a few dozen soldiers. Not sure what country this is. Ivory Coast? Maybe we're battling the forces of the Ufwe Buani administration. That might make sense since Ivory Coast refused to participate in the 1988 rally, so they're trying to maintain their territorial integrity. But wherever this is, whoever we're battling, we're not well-intentioned. We're just passing through, flaunting our wealth, leaving the locals to suffer under the structural adjustment programs and, obviously, rampant militarism. Even if we wanted to help, we could only make the situation worse. In their sick hunger for adrenaline and fame, all Mac and Mike can do is upset the delicate local ecological balance and destroy human life. When people back in Japan warned that the rally was hard, this is what they meant the trail of death and ruin that will follow in our wake, and whether we can bear the psychological burden of knowing what we've done. The final stage returns to good old-fashioned driving as quickly as possible, but it's also my least favorite stage. See, it's very easy to veer off the road and die. If you touch the cliffside, you lose a life. Drive into the ocean, instant game over. Skyla and Charybdis. On this level, and only this level, when you move left or right more than a hair's breadth, the car veers sharply. With no chance to adjust to the controls, this is a death trap. Many game overs later, though, and we cross the finish line into Dakar, presumably. Weird how I don't actually see Dakar anywhere, just more wilderness. After a drive along the Atlantic shore, Mike and I climb out of our car to watch the Senegalese sunset. A true bromance.
It's over! Seems we came in last place. So what? Amateurs don't stand a chance of winning. We were here for the thrill. I saw a lot of countries, killed a lot of people, and got a hundred game overs. That's all I need. Incidentally, the 1988 Barris Dakar rally really did have a body count. The New York Times reports six dead, but a more detailed account in Sports Illustrated lists nine deaths. Yeah, in Mauritania, a car plowed into a woman and her kid, and in Mali, another one hit a ten-year-old girl. That's ignoring the injuries, including several paralyzed. Sports Illustrated also calls this rally, quote, one of the most disastrous sporting events ever conducted. Ari Vatanen was leading the event at Bamako, but just before the finish, his car suddenly went missing, adding a bizarre touch to what had been an event tragically marked by a number of deaths. Hell of a subject for a tie-in video game, eh? Critics consider the rally an offensive neo-colonialist display of wealth. Even the Vatican called the 1988 rally a vulgar display of power and wealth in places where men continued to die from hunger and thirst. But don't worry, to make it up to the Africans, the rally distributed 11 motor pumps and 40 hand pumps to impoverished communities. Hooray! Okay, to be fair, they paid millions of dollars to the countries they drove through. In the years when the rally was held in South America, the drivers only damaged more than a hundred Chilean archaeological sites, prompting a military crackdown on indigenous cola protesters in 2014. Thierry Sabin himself died in the 1986 Paris-Dakar rally, so this video game did not receive his approval. But according to Thierry's wish, we were to go all the way, and the instructions were, whatever happens, we have to carry on. And that's what we did. Paris Dakar Rally Special pulled a Frog Fractions decades ahead of Frog Fractions, and I adore that. ISCO was not an avant-garde visionary, though, but a shadowy contract developer. A ton of Famicom shovelware came from companies like this. Basically, when a developer couldn't be bothered to, they'd pay an outfit like ISCO to pump out some software quick, cheap, and dirty. Most of the worst crap on the Famicom came from contract developers. Another ISCO hit is Transformers Convoy no Nazo, one of the worst abominations ever to curse the Famicom. Well, honestly, it's probably not even in the top 10 worst Famicom games. So far, there have been at least 13 other Paris Dakar Rally video games. Two of these, Made in Spain's Paris Dakar and Cocktail Vision's African Raiders 01, came out the same year as Paris Dakar Rally Special. Dizzy's parent company, Codemasters, also released a Paris Dakar Rally game a few years later. Some websites confuse this with the Made in Spain title, but the two are completely different. These are all more grounded takes on the sport, maybe reflecting differences in the Famicom and European microcomputer markets. But yeah, none of them are on Famicom, so let's save Dakar 2 for GameCube adventures. Though the controls are bad, and unlike in Frog Fractions, the constant new, unexplained mechanics frustrate instead of delight, ISCO could have made a generic, half-assed racing game, but did something memorable instead. I respect Paris Dakar Rally Special for being weird. You're never bored. And if you never want to get bored, you could subscribe to Mackerel Phones for more content like this, and unlike this, all kinds of stuff. I also have a Twitter, and a second YouTube channel called Mackerel Undercover, where I'll soon be uploading a Let's Play of Jalopy for any fans of weird, clunky driving games. Next time on Famicom Adventures, Vampires. Not Castlevania. Guess what it'll be in the comments. You might get it.